Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Um, I know you will be in a different part of the world at the moment. Uh, thank you for joining us today at Textile Digital Printing webinar. You are all very welcome. Uh, my name is Carlos Gordoville. And before we start uh, with the webinar, I would like to explain some house rules, although most of you will be familiarized with uh, soon by now. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you see that there is a chat icon. You can use this to communicate with our panelists and submit your questions anonymously, if you wish. Um, and then our uh, webinar host will try to respond along the webinar. We will respond some of them at the end of the webinar. Um, but in any case, uh, we will ensure all of the questions are answered after the webinar, if we can deal with them during the webinar. So um, once we start, one other thing I want to mention is once we start sharing our screen, you may want to reposition uh, the faces of the panelists at the top of the screen. So you will free up all the space and you can have a, a good view of all the presentations. So without uh, more, no more delay, um, the two hardware technology partners we have with, uh, with us Today, um, on one hand, we have context scanners, and on the other hand, HP printers. David Johersson from Context, Regional Director for EMA India, based in uh, near Copenhagen in Denmark, and Johannes Weiss, uh, Worldwide Textiles Product Manager for HP, based in Barcelona. So this webinar um, will have three parts. First. Uh, we'll start with uh, Context, who will show us how to digitalize a hand-painted piece of artwork. Secondly, we will bring this artwork into the digital file into ABA to prepare it, the design, to prepare it for printing, uh, basically doing some editing, put it on repeat, creating colorways and adjusting the colors, fully color managed by ABA. And finally, we will um, send the file to print to a dye sublimation technology with by HP stitch printers. So without uh, more delay, we can start with uh, David. Would you like to introduce yourself and, and show us the features? I believe you're going to be uh, using a Context HD Ultra X scanner. Yes, uh, I'm happy to do so and uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm happy to be a part of uh, of this uh, webinar together with ABA and, and HP. And uh, I would like to uh, just quickly introduce myself. My name is David Jorgensen, uh, Regional Director for EMEA and India Region. Uh, so I'll jump right into it uh, to kind of uh, give you a little impression on what is uh, scanning textile. I would like to start presenting a, uh, a video uh, which explains a little bit on how you actually do the scanning process and then I will go on move on to a um, to a presentation further on so we will be displaying our uh, HD ultra X together with our software uh, next image software we received a piece of uh, acrylic art from uh, ABA, uh, which will go through the entire workflow uh, from us going to ABA and, uh, and HP. So from scanning the, um, the artwork, you have a lot of different settings. You have a lot of different tools. You can start by saving the document wherever you want on your computer and you can do your fit into the entire match that would fit uh, your specification. On this specific scan, we have uh, chosen a 24 color bit um, and uh, 300 DPI. Within the next image software, uh, we say that is kind of the magic tool um, the hardware is doing one part and the software is doing an entirely separate part. You would have the option to edit a lot of things in the document. You have the opportunity to enhance as we're showing and on your white side you have a lot of options to do 
all kind of varieties, layers of editing tools. At all times, you have the option to, to save your document or to return to original. Very important to say that uh, everything that you put together in order to create the best image for you, for your need and your requirements, you can set to pre preset links in order to save time on your workflow and create the best productivity for you. So a lot of different options of opportunities that will enable you to really go deep with the documents from the scanning process until moving further on to the next phases. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So I will be moving from our um, presentation over to our presentation now. I hope everybody can see it. Yeah, that's we good. Can. Very good, yeah, very good. Yeah. All right. Um, first of all, quick introduction to context, then I will move on to, uh, to textile scanning in two directions, in pattern scanning and in actual fabric scanning. and touch on our HD Ultra X, which we are displaying, uh, displaying on, uh, on this webinar. Uh, quickly on, uh, on context, we were established uh, roughly around uh, 100 years ago in 1923. We have a headquarter in Denmark where I'm based out of. We have uh, international offices in US, China, and Japan, and consider ourselves the market leader in the large format scanning and are selling worldwide uh, to more than uh, 90 different countries. So, this part is, uh, is very interesting and very important, and I hope it will give uh, all of you some um, new information or, or maybe enhanced information on how we can help you guys uh, optimize your workflow from the early stage, meaning the scanning of the original. So I would start out with a, with a pattern. So when you talk about scanning pattern for textile, that could be various kind of pattern uh, varying from material in, in cardboard and in metal and glass. Um, but when you talk about the, the particular pattern, you talk about a pattern that you need to be reproduced. And the pattern, you need to have a scanner to do the right job. So whether it's the scan pattern going into to the cutting machine or whether you're actually doing a stitching of patterns, you would do that the same way using a third way, uh, a third party, excuse me, software application. So the entire process uh, and, and the reason for involving uh, a scanner, uh, hopefully our solution would, would be to, to save time and to save money. It's, um, it's very proven out there. We have a, a variety of, um, of different uh, options uh, in our portfolio, but the HD Ultra X is extremely uh, good to detect and to improve and enhance uh, the first part of your development phase being the scan. Uh, so when you create the image, very, very easy to import it into a CAD system and work from here. And whether it's uh, it's a color uh, separation uh, conducted by AVA or what it would be, very, very easy to work from here. So moving on to the to the fabric part, when you talk about fabric, again, it could be various of things. It could be an artwork that is actually printed on a piece of silk. It could be textile fabric. It could be, uh, it could be even wallpaper. Uh, we can do it all. We can do it all. We can scan it all. Why would you do this? You could do it, for instance, to detect weaves, sewing patterns. Uh, you could do it either to, to do it black and white only focusing on these particular areas. You could do that with one bit, or you could focus on the color as we were displaying a little bit earlier um, with, with, the, with the test uh, version. Um, so there are a big variety of opportunities. What you need to be very careful with is if you are dealing with uh, flexible or fragile material, you would need to use a cover or carrier to, to carry 
your um, your original, so it does not get uh, get damaged in any way through the scanner. Again, this is extremely useful when you talk uh, a, a pre-process uh, towards uh, color separation. Moving further on, so. Going into our product, the HD Ultra X, uh, we we mentioned four particular areas where we think we have a unique setting up uh, of options. So we have the productivity, uh, and productivity we, we we base on that we have the highest speed out there. So you could really get the workflow. When we talk about speed, we talk about hardware and software. So they work coherent together. So you get a very very fast workflow going on. When we talk about quality, um, we have the best solution, we believe. We uh, are using a ICC profile. We're using the best lenses you can get on the market for Jitsu. We are doing a 1200 DPI in order to create the best and sharpest, sharpest image uh, for you to work on with um, in, in our software and further on in, in the third uh, party um, software application that you would be using uh, or CAD program, what, whatever it should be. And the flexibility, what we mentioned here uh, is that you are actually able to work with thick media or you're able to work and handle fragile media. We, we have a specific setting uh, with our camera-based solution to get depth of focus, but we also have an opportunity to work with thick media as well as fragile media. We have two different settings on our machine to work specifically with these kind of things. And the workflow, what we mean by this is that it's designed for your flow, for your workflow. So we are making it quite easy to, to make the settings according to your need with the software applications, we are making it very easy to convert the document that you would get uh, into a, a CAD uh, software application and convert uh, if needed to, to vector file to, to edit further. We have uh, three different uh, sizes of, um, of our CCD line, uh, 36, 42 and 60 inch. Uh, and again, if you look at those speed uh, numbers uh, on, um, especially the bottom, this is the fastest speed you would get on the market. Comes with an extremely high quality. Even with the higher speed, we keep the same quality. The next image is something we are extremely proud of. It is a unique setup software that would make your entire process the best from the beginning throughout um, the next phase going into color separation in this case and moving on to, um, to the printing. Lastly, I would like to mention that uh, we are doing our utmost to uh, ensure that uh, we make the least, the minimum impact on the environment. It is very important to us. So when, when we mention certificates, this is one thing, but we try to exceed uh, all expectations out there in terms of bringing electricity, in terms of setting some, um, some demands uh, back into to our suppliers, but also try to do the best that we can do in terms of saving the environment and uh, and the globe so that was uh, that was it from me and uh, i will give it back to uh, to you carlos thank you very much thank you very much david um i've seen the context scanners such uh, several of our fashion customers and i'm very pleased to see this very versatile uh, scanner and, and how they could scan on a different substrates i was very impressed with that so um, now, um, so we're going to show how AV can help to convert the digital file scan and how we can help your customer, our customers to boost the productivity and creativity. So we have Rachel, our uh, digital print consultant, to help us with the demonstration of the AV software. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Hi, yeah. Um, just before we move into showing the AV software, just a very brief introduction for those who are not familiarized with AVA. Just a very short introduction. Um, AVA has been uh, 35 years uh, in the industry developing CAD CAM software and offering support to textile and decorative print customers worldwide. The user, um, the user interface of AVA, as you will see, is very similar to Adobe Photoshop but obviously um, we specialize on textile print, offering a, a native and integrated software package. Um, 
with the different modules, but offering tools for designing, for um, editing, for coloring, for screen print separations, and finally for digital printing. The ABA, um, so the Vantage ABA offers gains in productivity and uh, very important, help to reduce the waste by uh, minimizing the number of strike-offs needed, for instance, when we try to um, match an approved colorway that is been printing digitally and we need to match it with traditional screen print or simply by helping to communicate colors and designs with customers and suppliers worldwide in the supply chain. And lastly, but uh, no less important, um, to mention that the largest department at ABA is customer service. Um, a team of multilingual experts who train and support our customers worldwide. Um, we work on a different shift from 6 in the morning to midnight UK time to ensure our customers um, make the best of the use of the, of the AVA software and somehow um, they get the quickest and most effective way of adopting the software. So thank you very much and over to you Rachel if you want to show us. Thank you Carlos. Yeah. Okay, so I have the scan here, and as you'll see, um, if I zoom into this corner, there are, there are a few blemishes, but we can fix that up pretty quickly using the carbon copy tool, um, which I've saved some uh, settings with here. So these types of blemishes that come through from the scanner aren't a problem because we can just blend them in to the original artwork, like so. And we also have some filters that we can use to remove things like uh, the texture of fabric that comes through from scanners. So again, these can be recalled at the click of a button and that will just help to soften out that, that texture that we're often asked about um, on, on the support side, how to remove those um, textural effects from scans. So we can do that with some filters, but most importantly, I want to put this document into repeat. So I have here a crop box set. Now this is just marking out um, the repeat size. And if you need to, you can set that to a specific size if you know what your repeat size is. So I'll just tidy that up and make it 32 by 64. And then I'm going to take this crop area and take it to a new document. So I'm going to crop that to a new document and then here is my repeat, which I can use my repeat inspector down in the bottom right to pop that into a two by two repeat. I can also set a half drop on this and I can frame the first repeat. So if I zoom out now, you'll see that the blue frame is highlighting the first repeat of this document. But what I need to do is I need to tidy up these join lines. Now to do that, I'm going to use the carbon copy tool again, um, but I'm going to copy from the original artwork. So let me just tidy up my windows here a little bit so that I can see the original artwork beside the new repeating document. Now using my carbon copy tool again, this time I'm going to use it in actual carbon copy modes and uh, I'm going to set the source to crop box. Now this is something that we don't have in Adobe. Um, and essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be copying from the original document. And as I do that, it's going to locate my cursor in relation to that crop box. So as I start to paint, you'll see the cross on the left is following my brush strokes, which means I can very quickly put this document into repeat. Now, as I'm painting, I may want to pick up some of the areas on the other side of the document. So at the moment, my, my crosshair is on the left, uh, sorry, on the right, but I want to move that to the left. So I'm just going to tap my left arrow and that will locate um, my, my position in the original document. So what I can do is I can blend both sides of this artwork until I'm happy with the repeat. And if I zoom out a little bit, you will see 
that as I paint, fix this area here, the big green area, you'll see that that is being fixed in all of my repeats. So I only have to fix the uh, right hand side and the bottom of this document. So if I go into more repeats and increase my brush size, you'll see that as I fix these, this scan, all of the editing is being done across all repeats. So always working in real time repeat. Now just to finish off this repeat, I'm going to take this motif, I'm going to make a selection of this motif from the original document here. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into my new document. And I'm just going to move that now again, as I move that, you can see it going across all the repeats and I can go right across that repeat join. And as I do that, it starts to come in on the left hand side. So I just want to fill this area down here with this um, partial image and I'm, I can flip that. And if I zoom in a little bit, I can, I can resize it, I can rotate it, what have you, but I can also edit its mask. So I can start to erase areas of its mask to help it blend better with the original artwork behind it. Or I can choose to use one of our blending modes. And if I use this mode here, min, that's going to remove the background for me. And then I can just place that into um, position. And then when I'm happy, I would fuse those two together. So what I end up with is a repeating document. So I'm finished with the main scan, so I can close that down. And I can continue working on this document here. Now my next step in, in my workflow would be really to separate this document. Now even if I'm, even if I want to separate this document for, for digital, I would want to separate it in order to create colorways. Um, separating enables us to change just one or two colors within the document or create lots of colorways. So I'm going to show you how we would separate something like this in ABA. Yes, correct. Uh, of course, we can still um, edit the, the design and use our um, tools to, to change the color balance of the image and, and create different variations. Mm, but it's, if we wanted to hit particular Pantone colors um, or create different color variations, um, with another software will we'll take a lot of work. ABA is something can be done very quickly as Rachel will show us now. So in, in order to start the separation process, I would need to just select each of the colors that I would want to separate and that would add a blank layer for me in my layers palette over here on the right. Um, but because I am up against the time a little bit, I have preset um, a button down on my left here which if I click that, it will load the colors in for me. And then what I can do to help me is I can just sort these layers in terms of hue. So it groups them in, in color, um, which will just help me navigate the layers a little bit easier. Now, if I go to my separate menu, you can see that we've got a whole host of separation methods here and some are for flat artwork, um, some are for tonal artwork. So I'm going to use advanced color here because this is perfect for watercolor designs such as the one we're looking at. Now I'll just zoom out and I'm going to click make first of all. So I'm just going to start the separation process. Let's just make those invisible first. Click make and that will make, um, that will kickstart the separation process. So if I show you each layer individually, you can see that we've got information on all of those now and together they look like this. Now this needs a little bit of work, but in order to tweak it um, properly, I need to be able to see the original artwork. So down on my left hand side here, I'm just going to click this small plus button and that will split the view, meaning that in one view, I can view the original artwork, which is now on my left. And in the other view, I'm viewing the separation. And we can see that it needs a little bit of adjustment. So if I zoom into this area here, for example, and look perhaps at this green. Now, I may not have selected the correct green to begin with, but using this color block here, 
I can option click on there and I can change the color that I am separating. So I can fine tune those tones in the separation by changing the color. And I can also, if I look at the yellow now, I can also use this slider bar here to, for example, add more information to the separation. Or if I move this slider bar to the right, it will take information away from the separation. So I've got very high levels of control over what I'm doing here on each of the layers. And the third level of control that we have is this gamma curve here. So I want to boost the tones on this black layer. So first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit more information onto that layer. And then I can start to increase the tones on that layer so that they are more obvious to us. So this little window provides a huge amount of control. And when we're finished with the separation, we can simply click make. Just before I do that, I just want to point out that if you forget a color, which I think I did down here, if you forget a color, that's not a problem because you would simply add that to the file and you would add that into the separation like so. So it's, it's not a problem if you forget a color in the initial setup of this separation. So I'm just going to click make, uh, sorry, fix layer on all of those. And that will confirm those changes. Now I'm going to open up um, one I did earlier, so to speak. So with a little bit more time given to it, your separation will end up looking like this. Okay, so lots of information on all of those layers. And the next step for me would be to start creating some colorways. So if I click this button up here, you can see that I've only got the one colorway. So I'm going to add a colorway to this, clicking the plus up here. And now I've got a duplicate of my first one. Now the first way I'm going to color is using a color picker. So if I option click and open up this color picker here, um, there's a little checkbox down here that says printer gamut. So if I click that, what that's doing is it's restricting the colors that I can see to my printer's gamut. And you can see that I've set an HP stitch profile in here. So all of these colors that, I'm, that I can see now are actually true to the printer that I'm going to print to. So as long as I select colors within this color shape, I can be guaranteed that they are achievable on my printer. I'll just select some nice bright colors here. Okay, and then within the same document, we now have two colorways. Now I'll make a third, and this time I will color with a Pantone color file. So I've just double clicked on my color chip and that opens our Pantone color file here. And then you can either search for colors or you can simply select them. Okay. And then the fourth way would be to color from a um, swatches palette. So this palette is ideal for storing cost, uh, colors sent to you by customers, for example. They might be this season's trends, just some colors that I use regularly, which I can then just drag and drop into the layers palette, like so. So now what I want to do is I want to lay my colorways out. So I'm going to go into the layout page and this enables me to tile all of my colorways. So I have four colorways and I'm going to tile them across the page like so and just set the page. And this is great because this means that we can now start um, color, you know, balancing all of the colorways um, when you can see them all on screen. Now you can drag colors from one colorway to another. You can also swap colorways. So if I zoom in down here and for example, select these two colors, I'm going to change, uh, flip the colors between them. So I go to the colorway menu and select swap colorways and that will just swap the colors on each of those colorways like so. You can also very quickly 
if I go down to this one, convert your colors to Pantone colors. So if I double click on this chip, it's going to locate the closest Pantone. And then I can click enter. And I could just work through the colorway, like so, just very quickly converting all of those to Pantone references. Now, if I just remove these objects and I want to delete the colorways that I've added, just to show you one last feature, and that is the ability to load colorways. So if you're working on main designs and coordinates, you can color up the main design and then you can load in, you can save the colorways and then you can load those in later on. So I'm going to load those. And now you can see that we have seven colorways here. Now, what I want to do is I want to now lay out a template. So an attractive template to print just for sampling to begin with. So I'm going to load in one that I made a little bit earlier, which shows an array of colorway options. It shows some dynamic text here. So it shows us the scale of the design and the profile that we're using. But you can also see that we've got a bit of a visualization going on here. And that is just a, a little, it's a 3D mapping program that we have, which enables you to visualize and show customers or colleagues alike your ideas and how your design would sit on a particular product. And then if I load this layout here, this is pretty much what I have sent over to HP, which uh, Chris and Johan are now going to show how it was printed on the HP Stitch printer. Thank you, Rachel. Um, beautiful colorways, a good choice. Um, so this um, uh, ABA color management and the ABA RIP software is certified by HP, uh, certified by the HP Latex and Stitch printers. So now we move into uh, Johan um, and the HP R&D Center in Barcelona, who will show us how to print uh, what will be the printing results of these colorways? Over to you, Johan. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Rachel, uh, for the beautiful demonstration. Um, yes, uh, I'm happy and delighted to bring you to, uh, we're going around the globe. Now we're coming into Barcelona. Uh, Chris, who is uh, working in our demo center in Barcelona, received the files, and I would like to start with uh, showing a video of Chris receiving the files and uh, start to print them and do the sublimation. And after this video, I will come back to you and explain you more about dye sublimation and about the Stitch product portfolio. But first, let's start. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining the Barcelona Demo Center. Um, I'm going to give you a small presentation on the S500. Um, our dye sublimation printer. You will see behind me the S300, which is also one of our uh, dye sublimation printers, as well as our S1000, which doesn't fit into the screen because it's a 3.2 meter printer and it's located at a different uh, position. Okay. Um, thank you, AVA team, for sending out the uh, files to me. I'm going to launch them right, right now. So I will disappear from the screen for one second and I'm going to launch the prints. So and, uh, while my machine is receiving the prints and is starting, you can see the, the uh, green light uh, going on. Uh, what do you do if you're not printing? Of course, HP is a very nice company. So I'm going to sit down in my sofa and I will wait for my printer to uh, finish printing. Of course, this is a joke. I have to work really hard here. So uh, I, I sit down in this sofa because this is printed and finished. Um, it, it was printed on a, on an, um, a dye sublimation printer from us and um, I wanted to show you how good uh, the quality is. And let me get out here. I'm, I'm old, you can see it. Um, let me get out all, hold of those two cushions and let me bring them to you close. You will see that we're printing on a different uh, kind of medias. 
Um, this one is a quite matte and uh, structured media. We have nice, uh, very nice reds. We have uh, uh, dark blues. And if we're going to change to the second cushion, then you're going to see this one is a little bit more shiny. The colors are a little bit more vivid because of, uh, of, the, of the media itself. Uh, but you'll see here, very nice reds, shiny blues, and dark colors on the other side. Okay. In the meanwhile, my printer started uh, printing right here. And um, right now I'm printing on transfer paper to, uh, to then sublimate later on onto a textile. But uh, with these printers, we can also print directly on fabrics. As long as they're not um, too stretchy, we can go direct. And even in, in, uh, when we're going to use textiles that have an open structure, we have this tool that which, can, which we can integrate into the machine, which is going to be able, which allows us to print on structures that are open. So the ink will go through the media and will be captured on this, uh, on this tool. So this is the first design that, uh, that is coming out. I asked my printer to um, automatically cut after he stopped printing. And then we will go to um, the Cepha um, sublimation press. While he's, while he's uh, finishing and he's cutting, maybe I can tell you that we're working with uh, three liter ink cartridges here. So it gives me the time to, um, to start a production and don't, I don't have to be here every single time. This is a, a production machine. It's not a, a small toy that where we have to change all the um, ink cartridges every two minutes. Okay, right now, I'm going to go to the Cepha press. I already prepared my textile here. Let me quickly put the design over it normally. I would cut it nice to the size of uh, the textile, but in this case, I want you guys not to wait too long. So right now at the temperature of 195 degrees and during 55 seconds, I'm going to sublimate my ink onto, uh, onto the textile and we're going to see the results coming out in a second. So bear with me, it's uh, still 30 seconds to go. Uh, in the meanwhile, my printer is printing a second design. Maybe we can quickly switch here. It's printing my second design. So we will be working continuously. And of course, when we're going to print full productions, I'm going to print not from a roll to a sheet, but I'm going to print from roll to a second roll where we'll pick up and then it will make your, uh, your production to go uh, and run smoothly. Let me go back to the Cepha press because in two seconds it will open up. Here we go. It releases. I'm going to take off the sublimation paper. Look at this. Um, coming out with very contrastful colors, very bright colors. And if I ask the cameraman to zoom in, I use the textile which uh, which is structured, so which is a uh, interior decoration, which is going to be used for, uh, for curtains, for example. Okay, good. I will put this aside. I'm going to take my next textile. Just prepare it onto my Cepha press. Good. This one is ready. Coming back here. This one just finished the second design. And I'll do the same thing. You're probably asking how quick was I printing? Um, and then I will take this board with me. Right now I'm printing this production in three paths, which is production and quality. 
Okay, this uh, is for sure good for all these kind of uh, uh, designs that I'm uh, printing right now. I could even for this design go in higher speed, but right now I'm printing at a production at uh, around 43 square meters per hour, which is a very nice uh, production speed uh, for this kind of printers. Okay. And let me go back to the Cepha press because my second uh, design is going to come out in five, four, three, two, and one second. Here's my second design. Again, very nice, bright colors, good blues, good darks, good contrast. Nice black over here. Just want to point that, that one out. And this at production speed. Take this one away too. I'm going to take off the third design. It's cutting right now. The operator needs to run, no time to sit in the sofa. Third design is out. I forgot my textile to put it on. So first going to take my textile, put it on straight, and then bring in my third design. And we have another 50 seconds to wait until everything is finished. And while uh, we have 20 more seconds. Of course, this quality is equal on the S300, but also on the S1000. Of course, we're talking about different uh, printing speeds, but quality-wise, um, the quality is similar. So don't worry if you're uh, acquiring an S300. And for sure, if you're doing an S1000, we're talking about top quality. So here comes out my last design. Take the sublimation paper away. Ask the cameraman to zoom in. You see nice colors coming out. Nice design, by the way. I love it. And here we go with our three different designs. Putting them together for a second. And I don't want to take more of your time. I think uh, about 10 minutes that we took uh, to uh, print all this. I thank you very much for your uh, time uh, spent with me from a demo center in Barcelona. Hope to see each other live soon. Uh, thank you very much. Have a nice morning. Have a nice day. And for the ones in the, the Americas, have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Okay, now you saw in a 10 minutes time we were printing actually the, the three different designs very easily on the HP Stitch. This is a sublimation printer. Sublimation printer means that um, you're printing with sublimation ink and it's sublimation ink is based for polyester based material. Um, what do we think about polyester materials? You can print with transfer paper, that means you transfer the, what Chris just perfectly shown and you can print direct to polyester-based materials. Polyester-based materials, you need to think of a minimum of around 70% of the material, of the textile, needs to be uh, a polyester. So it can be a beautiful blend. Um, differentiation between uh, when to print on paper and when to print on uh, direct to fabric. 
depends, as Chris already perfectly explained, about the stretchability of your material, if the machine can handle this. In general, for interior decoration and perfectly for these beautiful designs, uh, scanned and uh, prepared uh, in AVA and then printed in the system, is mainly that you use paper uh, to transfer the images to your textile, but it also depends. So on the slide, on the, in your screen, you see now um, the three different printers, the S300, the entrance model of the eight stitch. On the, to, on the other right side, you see the S500, the machine that you just saw printing. Perfectly efficient, easy to do. Um, yes, uh, we're not paying to, uh, Chris to sit in the chair, but actually it's doing the work for you. It's doing its maintenance. It's making sure that you have the right colors and uh, making sure that it's ready when you want to print. And in the middle, the biggest one, the 3.2 meter wide, 126 inch S1000 production. Let's say if you want to make bed linen, if you want to make uh, print on very uh, 3.2, uh, 126 applications, you can do that. We have that on board for you. And in combination with the inks, making sure that the package is totally complete with the ripstop. So talking about the S300, it's rely on the HP Complete solution that we provide. So it's not only the, the printer, it's not only the inks, but it's also the RIP software that comes together in one package. It's an ease of use, easy operational. It's really for the entrance, for the people that want to go into dye sublimation and want to do the printing themselves and want to have the quality and the colors uh, in full control. So you have a scanner, you have the AVA software, and you have the combination with the HP Stitch printers, and you have the total package. You saw how relaxed Chris is walking around. Yes, from walking around, making very off switches, but the machine is doing what it's done. The file comes in from AVA, and it's so versatile, safe starter investment. So if we look, as I already said, it's a complete solution. HP quality prints, 1200 native DPI print heads on board. That's a lot. 1200 nozzles comparing to others with 360, 540 nozzles per no nozzle line. And with the 1200 native DPI, we can do a lot. We can generate deep blacks, vivid colors at a higher speed than uh, what you're used to. So it's an ease of use. Large windows, easy access, front media loading. That means you don't need to walk around every time. So the machine intention is really as easy to work with. And of course, with transfer paper and direct to fabric. If we go to the S500, what's the reason for that? Sorry for talking a little bit fast because I see that the time is running out. We, it's really designed to be reliable, unattended printing. It has larger ink uh, cartridges so that you don't need to switch the inks as often. Maximizes your uptime with easy maintenance. The machine is ready when you come into the morning um, and optimized for fleets. What do we mean by that is that both of uh, all three machines have an I1 photo spectrometer on board. This is unique for dye sublimation textile printing. What will we do with these uh, photo spectrometer is making sure that every time when you print, the color is the same, but also in time, but also between other machines. So there is a cloud solution behind it that makes sure that if you have a machine standing in Germany, in, uh, in London, in Denmark, in Barcelona, Shanghai, you can all match them with the same colors, just a matter of a couple of clicks. One test print, you measure the colors and your machine is exactly the same. So for proofing and production, this is a perfect solution for that, especially if you want to have your designs around the world in the same conditions and you don't want to ship containers loaded with materials. So the S1000 is really a workhorse, 3.2 meter um, force of producting on very wide location. Also printing on paper and direct to fabric. So you can do both solutions at one at three point meters wide. It's a high quality print because of the 1200 native DPI print heads 
and uh, production speeds, it goes up to 220 square meters an hour for your uh, in data. So save time with a simplified operation. So how do we do that? You have 10 liter inks. You can load rolls of up to 300 kilograms of material to make sure that you're not changing your medias as fast of, uh, as often as needed. So you can make longer production runs. As I said, 220 square meters an hour. Um, the thermal print head technology is inside. And uh, what is very important that you save up around 40% of your production time. So if you're used to do 3.2 meter width production for your beautiful bed linen, tablecloth, uh, curtains, and these kind of stuff, this is a very productive workhorse for that. So a small overview of what are the differences in the machine, um, what it can handle, what it can do. And of course, um, if you want more information uh, online, you will find all the information for that and the resellers that we have all over the world. So if we look into production, uh, uh, you see that uh, the S300 you're talking about uh, maximum production speed of 34 square meters per hour. HP Stitch S500 goes to 110 square meters per hour, and the maximum production uh, with the S1000 is 220 square meters per hour. So we did not invent dye sublimation. That was already for many years into the market. But now, with all the new technologies, with all the uh, knowledge that we had from our other product groups in the market, we combine that together. And yes, dye sublimation reinvented. Thank you very much. Carlos, back to you. Uh, uh, that was very good. Um, yes, um, I think there were some, some questions about the printer we were using for the demonstration, uh, Johan, is the, the Stitch 300 is the model Chris was showing on the showroom, is that correct? Where Chris was printing on was the Stitch S500 and on the 500. right side next to it was the S300. Yeah, right. There is a question um, saying, can this be transferred to product as well or just to fabrics? Um, and I'm not sure who out of us all should answer that, um, oh. but I guess it depends on the application that they need for the design, right? Um, or it is about the sublimation on different kind of products. So that could be. Sublimation mm -hmm. is an, sublimation ink is an ink designed for polyester based materials. So if it's a polyester fabric or it's a, uh, a hard, a rigid material with a polyester coating on it, you can sublimate on that. So let's say you have the most beautiful design scanned by David's uh, team. You have the, the most beautiful corrections in the color schemes that you want, and you want to have it on a mug or a drinking cup or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Or you want to have it on a mouse mat. You want to have your design with logos and yeah, perfectly. The sky is the limit as long as it's a polyester based material. So I hope this answers your question. Exactly. And then we've just had another one that says, um, do we need to pre-treat the fabric before printing? It depends on uh, the type of fabric. Um, normally, it's uh, already in the factory, it's uh, pre-treated. Uh, but as it's a polyester material, it depends on what you want. So if you have curtains, for example, yes, there is a pre-treatment in there. But if they are already 100% of, uh, let's say, 70% uh, polyester, as I said in the beginning, you can do it directly. But it depends really on the application, what you're doing. Normally, we recommend, because if you have fine details, to have a coating in there to make sure that the ink stays where it needs to be. If you do it direct, for non-direct, so for paper transfer, you don't need to pre-treat. It's not necessary. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a small a small correction when uh, Chris was talking about sending the three three designs. That's one of the beauties of ABA. There is one design, one original artwork scanned with with context, and from there we create three colorways very quickly, which make it look like a three completely different designs, uh, but all come from the from the same original. And, and uh, obviously, this is one of the nice features of, of the software, and obviously, be able to print the different colorways 
from the printer. We just had another question. Is it possible to print on 100% natural fabric? Uh, yes, but not with dye sublimation ink. You can do it, but then you can wash it off in one go because there is no polyester. As I said before, you need to have a minimum of 60, 70%, 70. Percent, 70 percent. If you go lower, it's possible, but it means that, let's say you have a fabric of 50 percent, 50, 50. That means on the 50 percent of your fabric, the dyes will not stay. So that will me mean that they will come loose and that will lose your color intensity of your product. And this is something that we both do not want because you're doing uh, high quality scanning, you're doing high quality editing, and then the end result is not what you want. So no. Yes, what we have seen in the last few years is they evolve a lot of the materials and there are many polycottons and they have very natural filling and, and touching. Um, there is this stigma, I think, attached to, to polyester, to non-naturals. Um, but one of the things, uh, and you probably know more of that, I know it's becoming very popular, is recycle, uh, recycle right. polyester and polycotton. And people are prepared to, to pay a premium um, because the, 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 the filling is, um, is very good and, and obviously is, is a recycled product. Correct. You see more and more of our customers printing on uh, eco-friendly materials or recycled materials from PET flesh, uh, for example. Uh, and the question and the demand is more and more for that. And the good thing about dye sublimation technology, good for bringing this up, is that you don't need to wash, you don't have any water pollution. So it's a green yeah. technology to, uh, to get the designs in the market that you want. And the easiness of the whole workflow, as you saw today, yeah, uh, there is no, no restriction. Mm -hmm. David, is there a maximum thickness in terms of what can go through your scanner? You're muted, uh, David. David, are you on mute? No, I'm trying. Yeah, we say, uh, yeah, yeah, we say uh, 15 millimeters is um, good, to, good to keep in mind. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, I would say that the thickness also uh, also depend on what, what kind of material you're using, but uh, we are very comfortable on, uh, on saying 15. Yeah. Okay, brilliant, thank uh, you. I've seen in one of your customers, um, obviously a very imagine, imaginative company uh, pulling through the scanner, um, fabrics stick to, to paper. I know something maybe you wouldn't recommend. Obviously, there's always a risk and the damage to the scanner, but I've seen those, these scanners and I have from the customers saying that allow them to scan in, in, in any different thickness and different materials. So obviously some customers push the boundaries of the machinery. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I would say, like I mentioned in my presentation, it's extremely important to to bear in mind uh, what kind of material you are using. If you are using a scanner, a feeding scanner like ours, uh, you need to be very careful with the material. If it is uh, flexible, if it is fragile, you need to use a cover. You need to use a carrier for it. Is it? It's extremely important. It's so much a shame if you get rid of that original. Uh, otherwise, you need to go over to a flatbed. We also have a flatbed in our program uh, in order to make totally sure that uh, that you have that covered as well. Um, but we, we have different kind of covers that serve the different need. If it's a black one, of course, you can get all the different shapes around the different angles. And we have a more open carrier as well if you don't have a specific need. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. Yeah, a couple of more minutes. And I feel Rachel, you want to read out any other questions? Johan, does the does the difference in percentage of polyester affect the color? It affects the washability. So, as I said already before, in the example from 50 50 percent. So you can imagine if you have 100 percent, that means 100 percent of the fabric of the fibers are uh, in enclosing uh, the dyes to make sure that the dyes are staying there. If you go lower, then you wash out the percentage who is not stored in your dye, so your washability will change. 
is that the same even if you use something like 80 to 90 percent polyester obviously you're gonna you, you could lose 10 percent of your your color yield then it could be depends how you wash it that's why okay. you see on polyester based materials don't tumble dry don't hang it in the sun uh you yeah. everybody who's doing the laundry at home and having the sports shirts for uh food for soccer and everything else know these labels by heart they do it once and then the whole family, uh, you have them behind you, never to warn laundry again. So yes, yeah. <laughs> be <Okay>. careful. <laughs> and somebody says, I, I presume you can use recycled polyfabric. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. So you see a blend of polyester, recycled polyester, and you see uh, blends of uh, recycled pet flesh and already the example that I gave. So. Uh, you see more and more, um, like 10 years ago, you saw polyester blends more coming in into the market. So it's not the rough stuff material that we had in the past. No, but you saw the pillows that Chris was holding in his hands and what he was sublimating on the curtain uh, fabric that we had there. Um, you don't feel it anymore. We see some silkish materials, but it's a polyester. Right. So you, the range is really expanding. And now you see suddenly also the eco recycled materials coming up. So yes. Brilliant. Yeah, we've seen that coming a lot into <laughs> outdoor, outdoors furnishing, very popular um, using recycled materials. Yeah. Brilliant. I think that's, I think we've answered everything. Yeah, you have time for another Are one. Any others that want to come through? I talk about the limitation of number of layers you separate ABA. Very good question. What do we do with the paper? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. <laughs> as as uh, dye sublimation ink is a water-based ink. So it's really water-based, eco-friendly ink. Um, so what do you do with the papers? The papers go in the recycling for paper and uh, is no chemical waste or whatsoever. So that's why it's a green solution as we communicated before. Very, very good question. Thank you. Great. Right, very good. Um, I think um, we're done with the time now. I um, hope you enjoyed the webinar. Um, you can still address your questions directly to David, Johan, myself, and we'll be very pleased to answer you. If there's anything else you want to add, David, Johan? The only thing no. I want to say, thank you very much, Carlos and Rachel and AVA for making this possible. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, David, Johan, for uh, very much for your participation. And, Pleasure. Uh, stay well and goodbye to everyone.